coming up on 5-Minute News. Kim Potter found guilty of manslaughter in Dante Wright's death. Texas withdraws pardon recommendation for George Floyd. And Donald Trump asks Supreme Court to block release of January 6 records. It's Friday, December 24. I'm Anthony Davis. A suburban Minneapolis police officer who said she confused her handgun for her taser was convicted of manslaughter on Thursday in the death of Dante Wright, prompting tears from the young black man's parents and a jubilant celebration by supporters outside the courthouse who chanted guilty, guilty, guilty. The mostly white jury deliberated for about 27 hours over four days before finding former Brooklyn Center officer Kim Potter guilty of first-degree and second-degree manslaughter. 49-year-old Potter faces about seven years in prison on the most serious count under the state sentencing guidelines, but prosecutors said they would seek a longer term. Judge Regina Chu ordered Potter taken into custody and held without bail and scheduled her to be sentenced on February 18. Outside the courthouse, dozens of people who had gathered erupted in cheers, hugs and tears of joy as the verdicts were read. They chanted, say his name, Dante Wright. Some held yellow signs that said guilty in large block letters. Potter, who testified that she didn't want to hurt anybody, looked down without showing any visible reaction when the verdicts were read. As Chu thanked the jury, Potter made the sign of the cross. Potter's attorneys argued against her being held without bail, saying she wasn't going to commit another crime or go anywhere. It was the second high-profile conviction of a police officer won this year by a team led by Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison. Outside the courthouse afterward, Ellison said the verdict brought a measure of accountability for Potter, but fell short of justice. A Texas board that had unanimously supported a posthumous pardon for George Floyd over a 2004 drug arrest in Houston backpedaled in an announcement on Thursday, saying procedural errors were found in their recommendation months after leaving the decision to Republican Governor Greg Abbott. The unusual reversal was announced by Abbott's office two days before Christmas, around the time he typically doles out his annual pardons. The withdrawn endorsement was met with outrage from a public defender who submitted the pardon application for Floyd, who spent much of his life in Houston before his death in 2020 under the knee of a white Minneapolis police officer. Allison Mathis, an attorney in Houston, accused the two-term governor of playing politics ahead of Texas's March GOP primary elections as he faces challenges from the far right. Floyd's name was withdrawn along with two dozen other clemency recommendations that had been submitted by the Texas Board of Pardon and Paroles. In a letter dated December 16, but not released publicly until now, the board told Abbott that it had identified unexplained departures from its process of issuing pardons and needed to reconsider more than a third of the 67 clemency recommendations it sent to Abbott this year, including the one for Floyd. Mathis called the last-minute reversal a ridiculous farce. She said the board, which is stocked with Abbott appointees, did not make her aware of any issues prior to the announcement from the governor's office. Floyd grew up and was laid to rest in Houston. In June, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison for Floyd's murder, which led to a national reckoning in the U.S. over race and policing. Pardons restore the rights of the convicted and forgive them in the eyes of the law. But in Floyd's case, his family and supporters said a posthumous pardon in Texas would show a commitment to accountability. Former President Donald Trump turned to the Supreme Court on Thursday in a last-ditch effort to keep documents away from the House Committee investigating the January 6 insurrection at the Capitol led by his supporters. Trump's attorneys asked the Supreme Court to reverse lower court rulings against the former president, who has fought to block the records even after President Joe Biden waived executive privilege over them. 
The Federal Appeals Court in Washington previously ruled the committee had a uniquely vital interest in the documents, and Trump had provided no basis for it to override Biden and Congress. The records include presidential diaries, visitor logs, speech drafts, handwritten notes concerning the events of January 6 from the files of former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, and a draft executive order on the topic of election integrity, according to a previous court filing from the National Archives. Trump's filing came on the day that an administrative injunction issued by the appeals court was set to otherwise expire. That injunction, preventing the release of records, will remain in place for now. Lawyers for the House Committee asked the Supreme Court later on Thursday to expedite its processes and consider the case as soon as mid-January. Former presidents had a clear right to protect their confidential records from premature dissemination, Trump's lawyers said. Meanwhile, the House Committee has said the records are vital to its investigation into the run-up of the deadly insurrection aimed at overturning the results of the 2020 presidential election. Before and after the riot, Trump promoted false theories about election fraud when he lost to Joe Biden in an election certified by officials from both parties as fair. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate, and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health, and climate, delivering independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily.